Welcome to day 24 of the macOS and iOS security internals advent calendar. Today we will be looking into uh, the k uh, heap separation, uh, k -alloc types and also the new set Feng Shui uh, mitigation that Apple added uh, to the XNU kernel heap in order to make exploitation more difficult. So, what kernel heap separation uh, stuff is there? Uh, basically, since iOS 14, Apple has uh, started to redesign the zone allocator. They made some first changes for, uh, first, and then they completely changed it in iOS 14.5, and then they added more stuff in iOS 15. Uh, basically, uh, one of the things they added was new security features that involves uh, heap separation uh, and first and foremost k alloc heap separation. And later they added more. Also, since iOS 15, Apple created uh, a new uh, configuration array, uh, the security uh, flex array for zones. Um, that is separate from the normal zone array and the idea here is that the security configuration is kept in a read-only area and so uh, cannot be tampered with at runtime of the kernel and um, yeah so uh, the first thing that Apple added uh, was basically the existence of k uh heaps so, uh, or short is a K heap. So, what is a K heap? Uh, basically, the idea is that for each K heap, all the normal K alloc dot uh, whatever zones uh, are created. So, for each K heap, there is basically a separate K alloc dot something uh, zone available. Uh, and then, uh, depending on who allocates uh, what, inside the kernel a different kind of uh, k heaps will be used for the allocations so uh, initially there were three uh, um, uh, k heaps then for one version or so there were uh, four k heaps and then one of them got deprecated so there are three k heaps again so the k heaps that exist is basically k heap default uh, this is uh, where the normal main kernel was allocating data structures. Uh, then we have the kheap data buffers. Uh, this is uh, where basically blobs of data are allocated to. So this first separation is uh, mostly to separate data that the attacker maybe provides from data structures uh, that the kernel needs so that they are separated from each other so that when the buffer overflow in the data happens it does not directly influence the uh, data structures in the default heap. So then there was the kext uh, k heap. The idea of the kext k heap is basically uh, to be for all the kernel extensions that allocate uh, something and um, yeah, this was basically up to macOS 12.3 and then afterwards it got deprecated. So since macOS 12.3, Apple had added something new. Uh, we will see later the so-called key alloc types. Uh, so now they have added the support for variable length key alloc types. And so they need their own uh, key heap for that. And this is the KT underscore var uh, um, um, key heap. So, the next thing, uh, IO kit data objects, these are something that is uh, very often used for exploitation. So, uh, up to IO 13, all of these uh, IO kit objects were simply allocated via k alloc, so they would end up in the normal k alloc zones. Uh, but since iOS 14, Apple has actually started to uh, add new zones for specific IOKit data objects so that they are now stored in their own zone. So you can then see that here in the decompiled version of the code, uh, where basically for the OS array, uh, a zone is created that's called IOKit.OS array. And uh, this is where OS arrays are basically stored now. 
when you look through all the zones that exist, you will find that there's a bunch of these iokit.something uh, zones. And so these, these are all for iokit objects that basically are now stored in their own zones so that they not get mixed up in uh, zones uh, for, for example, data buffers. So uh, when you look now into these objects in more detail, you will realize that only the core object is basically inside the uh, um, area where the uh, um, data is stored. Um, the IOKit uh, zone, I mean. Um, all the extra data that an object needs uh, for example, when it comes to an array, it needs the bucket pointers. They are actually allocated in the different K heaps. So you can see here, this is the uh, OS array. When you initialize it with a certain capacity, it needs to uh, allocate memory for the uh, buckets where it stores the array pointers. And here you can see it's basically using the K heap default for that uh, because these are uh, pointers to objects and they are supposed to be in kheap default because they're not just plain data so they should not be in the kheap uh, data buffers. Uh, yeah, that's basically the idea here and uh, yeah, this is one of the other separations that Apple added. So now with iOS 15 they changed the game once again uh, because now they introduced the concept of so-called k-alloc types. Uh, so basically what key alloc types are in your kernel uh, is stored in a special section which is in data const uh, key alloc underscore types and uh, inside this section you can find uh, the key alloc types defined in this kind of structure here and um, to find out the name of a key alloc type uh, you would have to go to the zone view that uh, this uh, KLOG type is for and then uh, look at the zone name uh, because when you look at the normal zone uh, 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 name that is stored for a specific uh, KLOG type uh, you will see this kind of name KLOG type and then the numerical stuff. Uh, this sounds a little bit complicated as I as explained it, but if you see the example, uh, you will uh, see it's uh, a lot easier than uh, I made it sound. So this here is basically from uh, a kernel debugger. So you can see um, we have the uh, uh, zone array entry 257 and we print out the zone name and we say, uh, see it's klog.type 2.64. Uh, which says that it's 64 inside, 64 bytes inside, uh, and it's uh, this type 2. But what this really is, uh, you can only find out if you uh, look at the zone views um, for this uh, entry. And let's go to here, uh, element 0. You will see uh, this is basically uh, the name of that view. And so you see uh, this KLOG type uh, 64 is basically site.io work loop counter. Uh, I will show you later uh, more details uh, in an actual real instance of a, a loaded uh, kernel panic core dump. Um, but for now, this is the example you, you get. So uh, here is a, a bunch of other examples uh, extracted from uh, um, simply uh, playing around with the uh, debugger and um, yeah so there are many of these, of these now and the reason for this is that Apple changed the kernel a lot so that basically a lot of allocations now instead of having a, a variable length allocation they're now allocating a specific type explicitly and so each of these types uh, might end up in certain uh, k alloc zone now, uh, depending on the configuration of the k alloc uh, types. In order to make uh, usage of uh, k alloc types easy, Apple added new macros to the system. And here you can see it's the k alloc underscore type macro that can be used to allocate uh, basically uh, 
with a specific type associated to it and which will then end up in the right zone for a specific type. So here you see we have the struct pfioc underscore trans underscore e and uh, we use kalloc type to allocate a struct of that uh, um, type basically and we pass the uh, parameters to the normal uh, kalloc uh, here and we get uh, a block of data and here we allocate for struct pfr underscore table um, and assign it to table and you can see later there's also in the case of an error there's also a k-free underscore type to basically give these uh, pointers back to the specific uh, types uh, uh, zones so internally all of this is implemented by using set alloc flex and when you look into decompilation uh, you can actually see how this uh, works so this is basically here this is a similar code but uses uh, um, z alloc flex and as you can see here what they actually do is they uh, create a so-called zone of view uh, and set up this manually in the uh, in the code uh, so because they use this uh, to specify what type they're interested in and then they uh, use that allocs flex to basically allocate uh, via this view and that's uh, the whole magic of uh, using k alloc type uh, under the hood last but not least let's come to uh, the new mitigation called set feng shui this is something that apple added after the initial release of iOS 15 and macOS Monterey. Uh, it was basically added uh, later on at a point release. And this is a, a new feature that supposedly makes uh, heap feng shui in the k-alloc and z-alloc heap a lot harder. And what does it do? Basically the idea is that they add um, four separate submaps uh, for the uh, general allocation. So uh, allocations are no longer just in a single submap, they are now spawned over four different submaps. And uh, what, they, what they basically do is in the zone bootstrap, uh, they uh, randomly assign uh, one of those uh, general uh, submaps uh, to each of the available zones. Uh, basically, every single zone gets a random number assigned uh, between the four different submaps. Uh, and then, uh, additionally, uh, they uh, throw a coin to find out uh, if this submap should be used from the front or from the end. So basically, um, it can now uh, allocate from four different submaps and either from the front or from the end of the submap. Uh, which basically means all the zones are now uh, at very different places on the heap, you can say, uh, depending on this random, uh, yeah, numbers that are created once at boot time. Um, obviously, this is only created once at boot time, uh, so theoretically an info leak could reveal uh, this setup and could allow you to make certain assumptions uh, but yeah uh, for the normal feng shui this is something that makes it a, a lot more random and therefore a, a lot harder to put certain types right next to each other which might never be possible because they are in different submaps and uh, so on okay let's uh, have a look uh, how this uh, um, can be seen in a kernel debugger so I now want to show you a little bit about the k uh, fields that we just saw on the slides uh, in an actual uh, kernel panic dump. So let's attach to a dump here. Uh, basically I have now used the macOS 13.1 installation uh, because the KDK for that was recently released. So uh, let's attach to that and as usually we have to uh, uh, load the uh, scripts here and um, we can do it like this and uh, then basically we have the power of KGM help and of course all the LEDB macros and also the scripting capabilities. So first of all there is actually a 
show key alloc types uh, uh, command. Uh, you can try running this. Uh, the problem is uh, this breaks on certain uh, versions. Um, for example, here you can see uh, it complains that something is not in order with the mach or lib, but uh, I checked and it seems I have actually the latest mach or lib installed, so it's not really clear what the problem here is. Um, but uh the point here is it supposedly prints out all the different zones and their calloc types that are um, connected to this uh um, zone so but let's go just into the scripting to uh maybe have a better idea oh by the way when you run this comment um you can also see that they have sub comments like you can do uh, dash z, uh, dash s, and uh, dash v. For example, let's try a dash v. Um, so for for whatever reason, this also doesn't work right now. Um, in another kernel version, it actually worked, uh, but the first one didn't work. So it's really like uh, there's a problem in the uh, in the macros. Um, likely easy to fix but i haven't actually uh, had time to look into this and try to fix it because we can always extract the same information uh, at runtime uh, from a kernel basically by looking at the data structure and this is what we are doing right now so we go into the script mode and um, now we can do things like print out the xnu kern dot globals dot uh, zone array and when we look at this we basically now have all the different uh, zone uh, array entries and we see here for example at entry 255 we have a dot type 2.224 and obviously uh, this is one of those log types that we might be interested in uh, we can also see that there is a views attached to it. So let's have a look into these uh, views. Okay, so we print uh, xnu kern dot uh, globals dot zone array. We take element 20, 255 and we look into the uh, the name for it first. So we have the care log type here. And now we go into the views, uh, but we have to use the zero first. So we can see this is a site.io user network packet puffer pool. Uh, now we can try uh, going to the next view. And see that the site IO accessory power source, and we see it points to the same zone. So they are both uh, assigned to this same uh, KLOG type. Uh, so we can again go to the next one here. We see it's now an AGC legacy shared guard table backing G13. It's also the same uh, uh, zone. So let's continue this. Uh, another legacy uh, AGX stuff. Oops. Apple Mesa Sim. AFK IO service client. Site CC pipe I was and another site CP I was uh, another one, another one, and another one. We basically can continue this until uh, this ends. And as you can see, it takes a while for this to end. But now finally we have a next that is null. Uh, so all of these special uh, types are now uh, allocated in the same zone, 
which was zone 255, which was uh, this uh, key alloc type 2, 224 uh, zone, basically. So that was the first thing I wanted to show. Now we have this um, array. Sorry. Now we have this array uh, called zone uh, security array. So we can print that out. We have xnukern.globals dot zone security array. And when you look at this, you can now see uh, we have security settings for uh, every uh, zone. For example, we see the submap index. We see if the submap is used from the end, so the beginning or the end. We see the K heap ID and uh, some uh, the, that is the K alloc type and so on. And the rest of the flags uh, have not been covered in the advent calendar, so that's why I'm also not covering them here. Um, again, if you have more interest in this, uh, you have to look at a, a full course of us. Okay, so here, um, now with this information, what I want to do is I want to dump out all the um, zones with what submit, submit they're using and what um, uh, K-heap they're using. So I have already uh, created some short code to do this. Uh, so that's basically this code here. Uh, I go for the range of uh, 650 uh, zones. There are not that many in my system right now. And then I print out uh, some data per zone. So let's see how that looks like. And now you can see, okay, uh, we have 613 zones in here. Uh, you can see all the names and you can see um, stuff like what submap they are allocated from, what key heap they are on, and if they are from the beginning or from the end of the uh, submap. And when you look at here, you can see from the last few days we learned about the uh, read-only uh, allocator. And here you can see all the read only is in sub uh, map one. So that sub map one means it's read only data, but you can also see uh, they use zero and one, 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 uh, uh, zero, one. So the sub from end or the start is also uh, used. And you see they no, don't use any K heap association. So uh, this is all zero. Uh, when we now scroll down, we will find, for example, the k alloc zones here. And we can see here uh, that they're all assigned to the k heap 1, which is the default heap. And what we can also see here is they have all different sizes. Uh, that's normal for k alloc. And we can see they're all assigned to different submaps. Um, and they have different settings if they are allocated from the start or from the end. So you can see now that, um, for example, a 16-byte block um, and a 32-byte block, they are not in the same submap. So if you try to reheap Feng Shui with these two elements, it will not work because they are not in the same uh, memory area. So the k 16 and the 48, however, they are in the same memory area and they're both allocated from the end. So they're actually next to each other, so that would likely be possible. However, um, this is something that changes after each reboot, so you, it's nothing you can actually uh, count on. And so, um, yeah, that is basically the difficulty here. So uh, after this uh, chaos zones, we have more chaos zones. And as you can see here, um, it's Everything is the same here, uh, but it is uh, the K heap 2, which means it's for data buffers. And data buffers are separated from the rest. So the data buffers have their own uh, submap, which is 6 here. Uh, so that is the data buffers uh, submap. And um, yeah. 
So, uh, and then we go further and further and further. And then we see, uh, starting here, all the K-Alloc type uh, um, um, zones. And again, as you can see, they have no K-Heap, uh, but they have different submaps that they are assigned to. And uh, if they start uh, the allocation from the beginning or from the end of the submap, uh, you can basically also see this is all different for each different types. Um, as we saw earlier, uh, each of these zones might contain multiple different uh, structure types, but uh, um, then only these kind of structure types are basically bundled inside the same uh, zone. So uh, when we continue this, continue this, continue this, um, you will see that at some point we also have the key alloc types that are variable in size. Uh, so now uh, they use kheap3, uh, which is now the ktvar kheap. Um, again, since I was 12.3, basically, there's the ktvar. Uh, and since 12.4, uh, 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 um, the kext one is gone. So that's why 3 is now the ktvar. And as you can see, they also have different submaps. So uh, here's the same thing. Uh, um, stuff that is allocated here is also uh, differently in um, um, in the heap in different submaps. And yeah, there then we have more of the normal uh, zones. But again, each zone is now allocated from a randomly assigned uh, submap. Uh, only data buffers have, have the, basically the data buffer submap and the read only have the read only submap. But everything that's in normal submaps is usually uh, now in one of four different uh, because of the set Feng Shui um, mitigation, basically. Yeah, here also, by the way, you can see the IO kit. Uh, um, data uh, um, zones. So these are again separate zones for uh, IO kit objects. And again, uh, as you can see, they also have different assigned submaps. So they are also uh, basically spread over uh, the heap basically. Yeah, and uh, that's uh, basically it. So here in the end, this is all illegal. So it makes no sense. What, 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 what is here is all unused. So you don't have to uh, care about this. Yeah, but this is basically it. Uh, and uh, like I said, this is something you can easily learn from just looking at a kernel panic dump. Uh, especially uh, with a kernel panic dump, you can uh, investigate where are the specific allocations and what ranges are there and stuff like that. And um, yeah, but it's all out of the scope of this advent calendar entry. So um, let's end it here and um, yeah. We reached the end of the advent calendar. And so I want to wish everybody a Merry Xmas. Um, it was a pleasure uh, teaching these uh, little introduction courses every day uh, throughout the last 24 days. And I hope this little advent calendar helped you uh, getting a little bit into the topic of macOS and iOS security internals. Uh, of course, this only scrapes the uh, surface of uh, what is uh, needed to know for a full picture. And if you are interested in learning more, um, the best place to do that is usually our training courses and um, you should check them out. We do them offline and online. Um, and the new course set for the next year, 2023, uh, will be released within the next week before the end of the year. Uh, so you should really check it out uh, at antidote.com. Um, yeah, you can just follow the link from the description of the video. And uh, yeah, I hope I can see you one day in uh, one of our courses. As a special last minute gift, I have added three hidden Amazon gift codes in the presentation. So uh, good luck finding them. And uh, the first one who finds them will basically able to get some free gifts from Amazon.